a WEM monitor reverb mixing amp. Um, as far as I know, this is just a fairly basic amp. I'm going to take it apart, service it, see how it works. It has two channels, got um, treble boost on that one, and a uh, standby switch. Uh, switch switch in the reverb plug goes in there uh, treble bass well, the middle on the, that input and this one just got treble and bass so we'll see how they sort all that out uh, it's just the head version uh, it's twin EL34s as far as I know uh, it's very heavy so it's also got a whopping transformer in it uh, made in the 70s uh, but it's still using the old Bulgin plug. Uh, plenty of fuses. And then I'll switch on the back. I uh, can do 110 volts. Uh, it's got a 100 um, volt line as well. No, it's not 100 volt line. It's, uh, it's just another feed. 100k resistance probably on the input. Uh, another feed to the PA, so I don't know what the difference between those two would be. Uh, two speakers, um, outputs can be selected as 12 or 8 ohm. Oh. Bit stiff. Uh, normal serial number CW25194. Okay, we'll have a look inside, see what we can find. Taking the back off and uh, four screws that. Uh, Screw this to the plate, bottom, and um, so it's got the power section separately to the all the preamp up here and the reverb slung underneath. Um, these look like mallard valves, so probably not original. And then we got the date code here. On here it says. Um, April 1969, so it's um, a bit earlier than I thought. Nice big output, a uh, main transformer, a uh, reasonable output transformer. Uh, Mallard valve in there, which would be for the phase splitter, no doubt. ECC82. Um, so these might be the original valves up here as well. So. Um, uh, I could probably slide this out and um, continue having a look around. The power amp has a plug and socket in here which you can remove then the whole power amp can come out and turn uh, on its end. So looking inside you've got a, a basic printed circuit board more smoothing capacitors, uh, choke, nice to see a choke that really cuts the hum nicely. Uh, no bank components, um, the uh, rectifier, everything looks in um, reasonable condition. So, um, uh, check it out. This is all look good. Preamp came out pretty easy, it's just held in by four bolts, two on the front panel and two inside the case. Uh, as you can see, these are mullard valves. I'll take the top off that one, the logos are on the other side, and the logos almost worn off this one, but they're obviously the original mullard valves. Um, you've got, uh, it's pretty dirty, greasy. Uh, but this is um, one of the circuit boards they use where um, you can actually see through it. If, if you shine the light through, you'll be able to see all the tracking underneath. So it makes it a bit easier to um, sort out where things go. Uh, another date code on this capacitor here. Uh, 69. No, 1969. A uh, nice transformer, decent size to drive the reverb tank, which is just underneath there. 
Um, everything's a bit dirty, but it looks like clean up okay. And then um, you try and get a circuit diagram. Your verb tank hangs on these um, these rubber, especially rubber inserts, to try and absorb any vibrations and get feedback. And there's that plug that goes down to the power section, brings up um, uh, brings up the HT, uh, the heaters, and um, takes the signal down. Been drawing out the circuit diagram of the WEM monitor reverb, and um, you've got the power section in the in this part of the bottom chassis. Um, I was trying to measure this uh, this here. I couldn't get a reading. I, it's very unusual. So luckily the board um, lifts out. It's just held in by four screws. Pull that plug out there. And you can see the other side of the board, all the components. Uh, there's the pot for adjusting the bias. A couple of 16 microfarad capacitors on the bias there. And um, this component down here should be 56k it looks all right but um got a meter here and um put in the connecting the terminals across it's just completely open circuit there's nothing on the meter if i just chuck check the touch the other side see it goes up um nothing very unusual for components to go open circuit and um it looks all right, it's soldered in all right. The wires haven't broken off. So um, I'll have to change that one. So the circuit wouldn't have worked at all um, with that <laughs> open circuit. This is the um, uh, phase splitter to drive the two outputs. And um, it would have been uh, not working, basically. So there's no reason for that to go open circuit. Normally they drift off some of these components, but um, in this they get physically damaged uh, when they're being put in. Um, odd. Anyway, I'll change it and then uh, we'll continue. Uh, taking the 56k out of the circuit and i um, not sure if you can see but it's got a crack that runs all the way along the side. So some uh, stress crack and it's just cracked. It hasn't fallen in half. But it is actually cracked. Probably can't see it. So it's very unusual. Anyway, I'll replace it into the board and um, uh, put it back together. Quick look around the circuit. I've done the entire circuit diagram for the the monitor reverb mixing amp. Uh, it's broken down into um, basically the power supply, uh, including the bias and a little pot where you can set the bias, which is set at minus 37. Uh, you've got the uh, the actual output power section, which is um, over there, a chassis all on its own, with the uh, connections through plugs to the preamp section, which is the big long part. And um, you've got the output transformer, and there's a mic, or a, there's another transformer here for sending a uh, um, a line output which is isolated which could be used somewhere else on the preamp side you've got two channels um, the reverb channel is just on channel one and the channel two uh, is just a normal channel that has no reverb it's a very standard circuit it's got treble and bass only a volume it's all very standard Circuit uh, one ECC eighty three, just for amplification, uh, all very standard one K five hundred K, and uh, the output from this section and the other section goes up here, and is mixed through two of these resistors two hundred twenty K. Um, on the uh, on the reverb channel, it's got. Um, an extra control for mid, so it's got treble, bass, and mid. But the circuit is almost identical because on this one, the mid can, the mid uh, is set. It's just a fixed 5k6. On this one, it's um, got a 10k pot, so you can vary it. Otherwise, the rest of the components are the, are the same. Um, 
there's a treble boost on the input which is actually a dual um, switch it's got um, it bypasses the uh, volume control with a 220 peak farad which gives you a lot of treble through there uh, but it also switches in the point 0.1 at the input which gives you a treble lift above about 1 kilohertz uh, so um, it's a double action switch um, now the the reverb uh, is mixed at this point into this valve here half an ECC83 and because um, the reverb output is quite low signal um, they fiddle around with these resistors at 1.5 meg into this uh, point here which is um, the mixing point and a 2.7 meg from the input uh, obviously they arrived at these figures to uh, balance the input volume from the reverb when it's up full because it's um, voltage divided with this 180k at this point so though they have pushed through a little bit of treble with a bypass capacitor there uh, the, um, the reverb unit's working it's driven hard by an ECC82 in parallel driving the transformer that's that transformer uh, down there, nice big transformer. Drives the signal hard into there. The spring that's picked up by the coil here um, feeds into the. Um, it's, it feeds into the other half of the ECC83. Uh, the there's a ground connection there which uh, grounds the grid through the coil uh, they've selected this uh, capacitor resistor to give you um, the right sort of tone treble through the through the out of the reverb unit then it's got um, a volume control to feed the reverb signal back in and mix it and there's the foot switch you can just earth that point with a foot switch plugged in there so you switch the reverb out um, the signal comes down into the through a screen lead into the chassis down below where there's another socket where you can take the signal out so that that socket and the standby socket are basically identical that so one is connected down here the capacitor there phase splitter a bit of amplification into a phase splitter 56k 56k into the EL e EL34s which are connected unusual you don't normally see this the suppressor grid is normally connected to ground or bias this one is actually connected to bias but not actually the bias point there it connects to the signal and bias point there on each valve um, there's a big debate about whether that's worth doing or not whether it gives I don't know, it was obviously in a, probably in a Mallard paper somewhere, they just copied it. Um, 560 ohm um, grid resistors. Um, and this is biased, as I said, at minus 37 volts. Standard transformer output. Uh, checked a few voltages. Um, up here you've got the output from the diode here which goes diode full wave rectification I, I have checked these capacitors when they're stacked on top of each other to increase the voltage you have to check them carefully and make sure one hasn't gone down and therefore the voltage will be across the other one and then they're already rated at 350 volts I did put um, a voltage probe on this point halfway up to check that the voltage is about half on this one and it's also up there as well to make sure they're about half and uh, they weren't exactly half especially on this one um, showing that they drifted a bit but good enough as long as it doesn't exceed the voltage on one half um, so the voltage uh, at this point is about 423 I measured before I'm feeding in uh, 200 about 236 volts on the um, voltage supply, it's drawn about not, nearly 0.4 amps 
uh, says 425 volts at this point. I measured 423 earlier when I measured it. And then it drops it to the 22K to feed these uh, ECC83s down here. And you've got two, about 291. Uh, yeah, it's still 291 on that one down there. Uh, that 291 is actually on the um, ECC on the transformer, and this ECC82 is working hard. And you've got 23 volts on the um, cathode, which is there 22.94. Yeah. I've checked all the other voltages using uh, another meter in this probe. Uh, everything's fine. One, these are all about 1.4 volts on the cathode, which is very, very normal. Nothing unusual about any of that. And um, they're all 1.4, so nothing's leaking. Capacitors are not leaking. There's a bit of a hum pickup, uh, which I'm assuming might be just because of the la way it's laid out next to the big transformer. And we'll find out later. The um, slide switches on these WEMs tend to go uh, open circuit, and uh, you really have to put some contact cleaner in them and work them backwards and forwards to try and clean the contacts up, otherwise they just don't have any contact at all. Um, that's the uh, treble switch down there. It's one of the capacitors. That's that capacitor down there. The point one. They've just wired it to ground there. Um, it's a very simple circuit, just like all um, WEMs. They just follow the basic guidelines, and that everyone else uses the only strange bit was where they fiddled around with these um, big 1.5 and 2.7 megs to get the balance with the reverb tank uh, signal right. They probably did, they must have done that by trial and error. And also putting in this, um, which would now be quite expensive, uh, line driving um, uh, transformer, which is in fact that one, just you see it down there, that's that can there. You don't see them any much anymore because they might be quite expensive. And they fiddled around with the uh, resistors to get the um, obviously the signal about right, not too big, not too small. Um, I'll uh, put it back in the case and uh, we can do some sound checks because I have briefly um, I did briefly turn the guitar around. I don't know if it's still uh, got any volume. Yes. Got a speaker under there. Um, I've checked the uh, controls are working. Got the reverb. I turn the reverb up. And uh, is it working? Let's see. You can just about hear the reverb is working. All the controls are working. There's um, a lot of bass. This whopping great big output transformer. Uh, gives you a lot of bass so it'd be very useful for um, a lot of WEMs don't have very big transformers so they don't really give any uh, decent bass but this one does just a few notes on the WEM monitor reverb I've got the uh, power section out of the monitor reverb running on its own uh, I've reduced the um, mains voltage slightly because um, running the the power section on its own without the preamp of course the um the h t and the and the uh, heaters etc will be slightly higher voltage so I've just reduced it a bit just to check its operation so um with that, you can feed uh, a signal from the signal generator into the circuit here because it's got a convenient um connection uh, on the slave output so you just feed it in here and it goes into the start of the phase splitter now looking at the circuit diagram uh, there's twin EL34s and um, I've set it to 12 ohms load on the connection on the back down there and um, I've got a uh, a heat sink a 12 ohm load up there big resistors and um, I've actually got it connected as 12 ohms inside 
I've got a speaker which you can hear the turn down the sound a bit so you can just hear it and um, I've got uh, an RMS voltage uh, measuring the voltage across the load and I've drawn out a um, graph here for convenience with a 12 ohm load you work out the watts it's V squared over R so rather than keep calculating I can just look on on here so um, with a, I've just drawn this graph so with a 12 ohm load say we're looking at uh, watts along the bottom say about 30 watts so going up here to the 12 ohm part we're looking about um, getting on for 20 volts RMS across the load so um, I've connected up a as I said the voltmeter there and I can turn up the signal with the signal generator now just for convenience uh, at the moment I've got the um, scope on the phase splitter points uh, inputs to the EL34s uh, here and on the other one there now this amp is um, one of those that has the suppressor grid connected to the negative bias so um, it's on fairly unusual normally suppressor grid is connected to ground or to the cathode it collects any um, electrons that are coming back off the anode when it gets hot anyway um, you see this on a few amps not many anyway I've connected it to got the um, scope as I said on there so um, the resistors are well heating the 12 ohms they don't actually get that hot even at full um, load I mean they dissipate 30 watts quite easily so uh, let's just turn up the um, signal a bit and you can probably hear it uh, so those are the signal outputs out of the phase coming through uh, we're starting to see 11 volts and if I turn it up to max um, you can see 19 and a half volts across the 12 ohms so uh, just turn it back down and as I said on the graph uh, 19 and a half volts across 12 ohms is um, is there it's just over 30 watts so um, at 1 kilohertz putting out 30 watts and um, the peak to peak by the way on there at 10 volts per division is 60 volts uh, on the scope if you check 10 volts per division if I turn it up It's about 60 volts peak to peak, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, it's just over, about, just over 60 volts, about 65 volts on these here to give you um, the maximum output. Um, so at least you know the phase inverter is working properly because both the phase signals seem to be the same amplitude and um, no distortion on them either so uh, face bit is working um, which is good news because I found a fault on this circuit board and it was not wired up I don't know it would have worked but the um, the 1k resistor here was wired to the slightly wrong and anyway I corrected that so just showing the signal which is the yellow trace which is across the load up there and I'm just uh, nearly at full power just turn up the full power and you can see any distortion on the signal the yellow one it's going a, a slight kink in the middle at the crossover point you might be able to see that and uh, the rest of the signal doesn't seem too bad but that kink at the crossover, if I switch it to 10 kilohertz uh, and turn it up, there you go, and uh, you can see that kink at the crossover there.
really bad on the left side of the um, of the signal. That's at 10 kilohertz. I turn it back down. That's um, 10 kilohertz. There's the voltage, 19 volts. That's about 30 over 30 watts. And the kink starts coming in about 10 volts on the across the load. So um, I don't know uh, if that's look at that whether that's a problem or not on the bias in all the valves out. Uh, G1 I can put it on 100 hertz. Let's put a bit of signal in and reset the scope. There you go, uh, just reading the frequency down there on the scope, 100, 100 hertz. Um, let's see if it distorts, turn up the volume. Um, kink isn't so as severe, the, the, the waveform's getting a bit uh, spiky on the ends, isn't it, where it's... Um, reaching the maximum it can get to. Still doing 19 volts so it's uh, still managing it. That's at 100 hertz. Um, so that's the uh, power output of this um, amp uh, and signals. Got the guitar uh, plugged directly into this channel uh, with the bright switch off and a bit of reverb. Uh, treble and medium. Uh, bass is down. There's a lot of bass on this, so I've turned the bass right down. The middle's right up. reverb and you just got treble and bass so um, put the guitar on treble
treble back off. A lot of trebles. Turn the um, reverb down. Some treble boost on there, bit of reverb. 